We're talking Cowboys and Niners. And, you know, who's more valuable, CMC or Brock Purdy to this offense? Peter King joined Willard and Dems yesterday, and here's what he had to say about that. Who's more valuable? 888-957-9570. Who's more valuable, CMC or Purdy? If you had to beat the Dallas Cowboys this week and you heard that one guy among Brock Purdy or Christian McCaffrey was going to miss this game, what would you say, which guy missing the game would give you the better chance to win? In my opinion, Christian McCaffrey missing the game would give you the better chance because that would mean you'd have your quarterback. These are all fun discussions to have. But I think that right now, today, October 4th, uh, 2023, that Brock Purdy, I would consider him to be a more valuable player on the Niners than Christian McCaffrey. It's interesting how we try to um, quantify, measure, whatever you want to, whatever word you want to use to describe, you know, value, right? Like Christian McCaffrey threw over the 17 games. We, we can clearly see how valuable he is both to himself and the yardage that he accumulates, mm -hmm. the touchdowns that he scores, and then what does he do for the others around him in terms of the spacing to allow them to also right. feast. But then there's also something to be said for the distributor of the ball and being able to have the defense honor the vertical passing game and laying off the line of scrimmage to maybe get Christian McCaffrey right. to that second level, you know, a little right. easier, right? I go back to that first half against the Cowboys in the playoffs last year. Christian McCaffrey was kind of bottled up. Not that he wasn't good. I mean, he was bottled up. And look how stagnant the offense looked. Uh, they could barely move the ball. Right. And even with him out there as a threat that has to be right. honored, they scored 19 points, and they were lucky to get 19. They're very lucky. You know, I think that that's a reasonable point. I just keep coming back to this. If Sam Darnold's going up, because the question was phrased, the Cowboys this weekend, right. which I think is a fun one. If it was Sam Darnold... I'd be very worried about Sam Darnold versus Micah Parsons. I would be very worried about that front seven against Sam Darnold. With no Christian McCaffrey, I trust Brock Purdy more than I trust Sam Darnold with CMC. And I'm only going off me having very little faith in Sam Darnold. Yeah. And that, I don't think that's, that's – I don't even think that's even – No, it's fair. I, I don't know. I could be way wrong. If Trey Lance was playing. If Trey Lance was mm, a backup. I think it looks really bad without CMC. Mm. In the same way, I think it looks really bad. Mm. Uh, you know, or excuse me, if Chris, Trey Lance is playing with CMC, yeah, I think that, I think it's going to look really ugly. I mean, Brock Purdy went up against them with CMC, right. and it looked ugly. And it looked ugly. He was 19-29, 214 yards of that football game. Got sacked twice. Dak Prescott, 23-37, two interceptions, 206 yards. Christopher McCaffrey in that football game. He actually got outrushed by Elijah, Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. Elijah Mitchell, 14 carries, 51 yards. Christian with the 10 carries and 35 yards. And they also bottled him up, bottled him up in the pass he gave. Six catches, 22 yards yeah. for Christian McCaffrey in that football game. So what is that? Uh, 57 all-purpose yards. Mm -hmm. Dallas did a hell of a job. Is that, that's got to be his lowest output. Yeah, he um, did a hell of a job against McCaffrey. And, you know, even though he scored the touchdown, the two-yarder late in the game, Dallas had a chance to win that football game because 100%. they identified number 23 as the key call to that offense. And in the first half, they were struggling to run the ball. Second half, it got better. They went to With more Elijah. power formations. Yeah. Um, and they did a really good job of, of kind of bunching things up and just kind of getting two, three, four yards here and there. I wanted to ask you this question. If it wasn't Sam Darnold and it was Brandon Allen, would your answer be different? No. So it would be very similar? Oh, Brendan. No, 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 no. My answer would be I'd be very concerned if it's Brendan Allen play a quarterback. So, okay. So I, I because have a lot of more who the faith, backup is. I have a lot more faith than Sam Darnold. At least he's won some games oh, in the league. Okay. No, no, no. At least that's he a looks fair like point. a comparable that's, quarterback at times. That's a fair point. At times. Uh, I Look, I don't trust Sam Darnold either, but I trust him a hell of a lot more than Brendan Allen. I think that's a fair point. I think it's a fair point. What if it was like Nate Sudfeld or is it so like Sam Darnold over the majority yeah, of backups? I, I, I don't believe it's Sam. Yeah, I, I think Sam Darnold's better than all those guys. Okay. You can make the argument that Sam Darnold's one of the best backups in the league. Okay. So that and, does that factor into how you're weighing uh, this? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And and it's just the fact that Chris McCaffrey is on that the football dude. field yeah. is that dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? No, I hear He's you. that guy. I hear you. He's that guy. Like Barry Sanders. I hear you. Barry Sanders. Hard to argue that. Barry Sanders was great, and you he never had a top-ten quarterback. Scott Mitchell, 
Roddy Pete, Andre Ware, Eric Kramer. He had a bunch of mid quarterbacks. And Barry Sanders still did his thing. Well, that's why I love Frank Gore so much, right? Frank Gore didn't have the vertical passing game in his career, didn't have the weapons on the outside or the quarterback or even the greatest offensive line for the majority right. of his career. And you look up at his numbers, and they're pretty special. Yeah, they are special. They are special. Let's go to Joel in Lodi. Joel, what's happening, man? Hey, You're Joel. on a roast. Hey, good morning, fellas. Good morning, Butcher Boy, B-Square. What's going on, fellas? Hey, so listen, uh, you know what? It's, each one of them works hand-in-hand. Hand. You know, we're talking about quarterbacks, running backs. Uh-huh. Well, I'll just I'll just find this by you. I agree with both you guys. Uh, John Elway made five Super Bowls. He never won a Super Bowl until he got Terrell Davis, and then he won two straight after that. Dan Marino went to a Super Bowl's rookie year, never had a running back. John Elway never had a running back until Terrell Davis. Mm. Dan Marino never had a running back, and he only made one, one Super Bowl appearance. That was it. You know, he made plenty of playoffs. You know, it just, hey, Elway wouldn't have been, Elway, Elway would have had the pelts on his wall, but he would have always been one of those Jim Kelly kind of guys. You know, got there, but he just couldn't push it across the goal line, you know, as far as Super Bowl wins are concerned. But after, his, after he got Terrell Davis, man, made all the difference in the world. It's a fair point. Um, Peyton Manning, his first Super Bowl win. Joseph Adai was really good in that football game in that Super Bowl against the Chicago Bears. LSU? Peyton Manning was, yeah, LSU. He was very uh, pedestrian, Peyton Manning, in that football Him game. Him and Dominic Rhodes, I felt like, were very, eh. Yeah, but they were, they were I know, solid for the you're Cubs. right. Yeah. And, and, you know, you could say they were eh, but Joseph Adai had some really good years. Pierre Thomas, Reggie Bush in that Super Bowl. It's true. Beating the Colts were really, really good. Um, I think the Packers ran the ball well. It gets Willie Parker of Steelers beating the Seahawks. What was the who's the big big running back that they had? Who Green Bay Packers? Yeah, not Coon. Is but, James? Uh, uh, was it James? J- so he had a very yeah. I gotta look. I'm, I'll do I'll do the work. For yeah, Shel- who was it? James Shelton? Shelton? No, James? It was James? Something James? I want to say. So I, I, you know, running backs matter. But look, we're here's the fact, folks. As we get ready for the Dallas Cowboys. 888-957-9570. If you want to get into the memories, some of your favorite memories with T.L., Jerry Rice, they're both going to join us later in the program. The fact is, we don't want to see the Niners without both of them. We want to see Purdy and McCaffrey on the football field. Because when they're both on the football field together, the Niners are scoring 30-plus. Yeah. All right? They're scoring 30-plus. They score 30 in every game this season. They ended the regular season. James Shields. Yep, there it James is. James Shields. Shields, yep. Did I, I, what did I say, James? Shields. Well, you said James, and I was like, Shields something? Shelton Shields? James Shields. Shields the uh, the pitcher. James Starks. James the running Starks. James Starks. 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 Something like James that. Starks. A big game, James. Yeah, not big game, James. Which is the worst close. nickname because that guy choked so hard in the biggest games. Who? James Worthy? No, big James, James Shields. <laughs> he had the one win with Tampa early I know, on. I know. He shouldn't have got that name. That name is reserved for James Worthy. He was bad. James Shields. Then he got to the White Sox, couldn't throw a strike. Then he was out the league. Seriously. <laughs> Edgar James. No, Edgar James didn't make the Super Bowl with the Colts. No. He was in the Super Bowl with the Arizona Cardinals, however. Yes. Uh, when he signed with them in the desert and got paid. So, look, man, the fact is, Purdy just went 20 and 21 last week for 283. McCaffrey has had 100 all purpose yards in every single game this season. That's a franchise record for the first four games. He scored a touchdown in 13 straight games, breaking Jerry Rice's record, which we'll ask him about. 